And to celebrate 10 years, 10 years, mind you, of CX-5, Mazda has done an update. So, first, a little bit about the house that we've been staying in. This uh, is from McLeod's Daughter, so McLeod's Daughter's fans will recognise this house from the series. A $10 million renovation demolished the rear-covered veranda in favour of a conservatory extension. There are 16 rooms in all, eight in the main house, and eight others spread throughout Meg's Cottage, Stonemason's Cottage, and the conservatory building. Nearby is a new pool and outdoor dining area, and at the far end of the conservatory is a restaurant and bar. Downstairs is the Sommelier's 25 metre wine cellar and vault with the biggest table in history, and the original 1856 cellar at one end and a bowling alley and bar at the other. Once you've slept off the night's fun, Chef will cook you whatever you fancy for brekkie, ready for a day in the vineyards. And this is the sort of thing that I think you're going to be using your CX-5 for, in fact, any SUV, but this in particular. So as I said, 10 years celebrating Mazda CX-5. There's not a lot new in this model. Apparently they've improved the noise, vibration and handling just a little. The front and the rear, they've got new lights with those little squished daytime running lights and cute little tail lights. But still the Kodo design. CX-5 was the first to use that Kodo design. And there's some new wheels as well. Still 12 or so models. Now you can see that there's plenty of pickup. It's not going to set the world on fire anytime soon. This is meant to be a comfortable tourer for, you know, a couple, a young couple, maybe even a young family. And all you need is time, time to enjoy your car. Now, there's about 12 models. There's a collection of engines to choose from, turbo and non-turbo for the petrol, and obviously a turbo diesel. Because this is a Japanese car, the indicators are on the right side, thank goodness. And, best of all, that's not bad. Now there's two and all-wheel drive models. This obviously is an all-wheel drive model. It's got all the safety sensing stuff, lane control and active cruise control and blind spot monitoring and what have you. But this, this is comfortable. Best part of course is the interior, but there's plenty of gizmos to play with and the thing that I like about Mazda is that they've not put everything into this infotainment system. You've still got some buttons down here for air conditioning so you can get at it easily and that's what I like. The centre console houses the infotainment and drive mode controls. There's even an off-road mode for all-wheel drive models. The landscape centre screen houses settings and other such marvels as Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And remember, they can be used by voice control. The rear seat has plenty of room, send events on the console, as well as a couple of USB outlets in the armrest. The seats fold 60-40 to provide a fairly flat floor, but wait, there's more. 
The two-piece floor can be set at two heights as well as being reversible to keep the wet stuff off your carpets. And over the last few days, we've done dirt roads, all sorts of incredibly poor road surfaces, lots of highway work, and obviously in and around capital cities. So you don't have to go far off field to get that sense of how good a car like this is for touring. Now, this may only be a small car, but it sits on the highway beautifully. The suspension is sophisticated and smooth. If there's one thing I would say is that Mazda haven't done a whole lot with engines and transmissions over the last few years. And unfortunately, the six-speed automatic is smooth and as beautiful and silky as it is, it's a couple of cogs short. In front of me there's a heads up display. So I get all the information, what I want, where I need it. Some of the models, depending on what you get, have sunroofs. The seats, they've been changed slightly for this model. It's more of an S-curve, which Mazda says is kind of human shape. It holds your back and apparently after a long drive you can get out refreshed. My point being that no matter where you are, no matter where you are in the city or in town, this feels beautifully comfortable. And the thing I like is that what you see is real, is real wood trim, something you don't see on a lot of brands. There's plenty of space. There's a double cargo floor should you need a double cargo floor. When you get to your country pile, like I'm doing, Hi, it's Alan. I'm coming back from my road test. Thank you. So how classy is that? You turn up to your country house hotel weekend and the gates glide gracefully open. And in you go, till weekend away. Honestly, I've really enjoyed this. And no matter the road surface, this is really a, a competent and well-sorted car. I feel that perhaps maybe this has been out for five years, this particular model, with little tweaks and tucks here and there. It's got Apple CarPlay and things like that now. That it tops out at 52 odd thousand dollars, and I think for that price, you've got a lot of option. The point, the point you're going to want to make is, is this the car for you? Well, there's certainly plenty of choice. Do I like CX-5? Yeah, I do. I do like CX-5 a lot. I think there's a good reason that it's one of Mazda's best-selling cars, if not Mazda's best-selling car. And here we are. As always, hit like, leave a comment, and I think just over there to subscribe.